Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Grizzly Bear Sims YouTube channel, and welcome back to Lone Oak Farm. This is episode number 19, and let's give our dog something to eat here. Let's see. Can we do this? There we go. All right. There's some kibbles, boy. Eat it up. Eat it up. Grow big and strong. All that good stuff. All right. Well, uh, we are in a brand new game day. We are in a brand new season as well, and we're going to be starting to seed some soybeans, uh, as I indicated in our previous episode. And um, I've kind of got a little bit of a new setup here, um, my gaming um, area. I have been working today. We're going to lift this garage door up because we're going to move this out of here in just a moment. But for right now, we need to we need to pick up some manure and do that right quick like. It won't take long, or it shouldn't take long, I should say. Uh, but yeah, I've got a little bit different setup than what I had before. I need to turn my volume down just a little bit on my speakers. Um, so the wife, um, my wife used to have a uh, office set up in a spare bedroom. And so she has, um, um, she has done away with that. And, uh, or at least she's downsized. She doesn't need, she didn't need the large desk that she had and everything. So we had that desk brought downstairs to the basement. And I say we had done because uh, we had some stuff that was stored in the basement that we needed to move upstairs and some stuff upstairs that we needed to move downstairs. And um, one thing that I have realized is that as I have gotten older, um, I can't do some of the things, some of the really heavy lifting, especially when it comes to moving stuff down flights of stairs, just incredible um, um, amount of, um, of strength that it requires and all that stuff. And so stamina and all of that. So um, we basically hired some, some guys. Um, the company was called um, College Hunks That Move Junk or something like that. Yeah, I know it sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? But uh, you kind of get the idea. And so uh, these folks came and they moved some of this stuff for us out of out of the areas. Ooh, look at that corn. That's looking nice over there. Out of the areas where we didn't need it anymore into the areas where we wanted to store it. And we had a few things. Come on. Come on, Betsy. Get out of there. We had a few things that um, we wanted to get rid of. And so they also haul stuff away as well. And so it really worked out. Uh, it worked out pretty well um, with what we needed to get done, what we needed to get moved, and all that stuff. And so we're we're very uh, very pleased with it. Well, I inherited um, my wife's large desk that she had, and it's a really nice, really nice desk. And in um, in my man cave area, what I had been gaming off of for the last several years was basically a, a plastic table. Um, that I mean, I have a I have a desk set up in my man cave. Um, I had some really nice. Actually, I installed the cabinets and everything. I finished my my office area myself, and uh, we installed some cabinets and we had some granite cut and we had a really nice desk area. Well, that's not where I I gamed. I kind of gamed over in one corner, and uh, because I need to keep an area set up for when I do work from home. Uh, when those when those times permit permit me to be able to do that, I basically need an area where I can uh, where I can do that. So I had this gaming area set up, and I had my gaming machine set over there, and a few other things. And so my wife is like, "Why don't you get off those plastic that plastic table and take my desk?" And so that's what we did. We had it moved downstairs to the basement. Um, and that worked out really well, getting them to do that. And um, so I went through the trouble today. Um, and by the way, today is Sunday, the 27th of October. Um, not real sh Let's see. You guys are going to be watching this on or about the 4th, I think. Uh, the first Monday. I think it's going to be that first Monday in November. Anyway, um, that's beside the point. But um, got that done. So I spent today really crappy outside um, snowy cold it's only it was only probably 25 degrees today and um, and so I spent the day 
basically dismantling my gaming station and set up. And of course, I had to meticulously label everything, label all the cables and everything. The issue is not so much in the farm sim or the truck sim setup because that really only includes the one, um, you know, the Logitech G27 controller. Uh, it's all my flight sim USB hardware and everything that I did not want to have to remap um, stuff for. And it's pretty tricky. Um, some of this stuff and the way that P3D prepared works and all of that stuff, if you're not careful, uh, when you unplug a USB device and if you plug it into a different, different port or into a different hub, especially into a different hub, and of course I have to have I have to use USB hubs because I have so many different uh, so many different peripherals for flight sim that I just don't have enough USB ports on the back of the computer for this. And so, um, so got that done and um, got everything labeled and got everything uh, put aside to the other side of the office. And then got the plastic cable out, or plastic table out of there, and then brought down the, uh, or, or moved over the the big desk. Got that set up. Got that set up how I wanted it. And it's not really, it's not 100% perfect, but it will do what it needs to do, and it looks a lot better than the plastic table did. And uh, as far as comfort goes, it is a little awkward, and it's just going to take me a little while to get used to it because. It has um, it has a couple of slide-out keyboard trays, um, and so but because of the way that my flight sim setup and everything is, I have to uh, I have to kind of use the shorter side of the desk to put my to put my monitors and everything on, and then I clamp my either I clamp my steering wheel if I'm going to play farm sim or truck sim, and then I remove that and put the yoke in. If I'm going to play uh, flight sim, so everything is hooked up. Everything is, uh, you know, is looking good, and um, I think it's going to work out just fine. My chair is, I'm sitting a little bit lower than I was before, and that's a little bit weird. And um, but I'll figure it out. I'll get used to it. Give me time. Um, I've got kind of got my keyboard set over to the side of me because that a little bit easier than reaching over the top of the steering wheel um, even though it's got this slide out keyboard tray I guess I could put the keyboard in there but then I can't really see the keys that well so it's kind of uh, it's kind of just an awkward thing but since I have a lot of um, since I have a lot of keys mapped to my Logitech controller uh, I probably won't have to do a whole lot of, uh, of moving around. Let's just, um, well, let's set our parking brake so our tractor doesn't roll away. Let's just take a look at this canola. Nice looking stuff. So we're, um, we're pretty much 100% fertilized here. Um, our wheat is looking good as well. I think we are 100% fertilized here on the wheat. So that's looking good. Um, I can't wait to start harvesting. That's just going to be, that's just going to be incredible. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to uh, to these fields that we have up here. We're going to try very hard not to uh, run into our canola field. But if I bring up our map really quick here, let's just bring up the map, take a look. What we're going to do is we're going to start on 53, uh, 53 and 54. Um, get started on those. And... Um, Let's see, we don't need to plow, so we should be good to go. I think, I can't remember if we've cultivated that or not. If we haven't, no big deal. We'll catch it next time. But yeah, so soybeans are finally going in the ground. We've got, by the way, we've also got 61 degree soil temperature. So we can also get started. It looks like we've, our canola got a little over in the other man's field there. Hopefully he won't complain too much. Um, we've got that magic soil temperature of 60 degrees for our uh, cotton. So we're going to put cotton in here on field number 49. This is just the field to our left here as we drive up here. Uh, that's interesting. I don't know if I've ever noticed that little fenced in 
area. Field number 42. That's a cute little field, isn't it? Huh. That is nice. Nice and cute. Nice and cute with, uh, with um, fence posts and everything. Fence. All right. So 53 is our field. Uh, we bought this from, or actually, this is one of the fields that we are leasing. Um, because releasing this field because um, the other farmers are having tough a tough go that's a story so let's zoom out here just a little bit and um, what we'll do is we'll come back we'll come back in here and drop our our in rows here as we need to so let's uh, let's turn our GPS on let's set our auto width Let's uh, let's go ahead and lower and turn her on. And we'll drop our A in here. And we'll drop our B. And we'll lock our stuff in there, our GPS, and we are off. We are sowing beans. Hope everyone is having a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, I have just been, we are still extremely busy doing, doing things. Now we're, we're converting these, uh, my wife is converting this office um, back into a bedroom. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do some really long, long rows here because why not? Um, even though there's a road in between these two fields, I believe the field dimensions are the same and there's no fence to get in our way. So we'll just lift the cedar up as we go across the road and set it back down and all will be just perfect, I think. Anyway, still doing, still doing a lot of honeydew projects, still doing a lot of, um, a lot of different things um, here in the house. Getting ready, you know. Well, we've got every, we've got all the outside stuff done. So we're we're we are ready for winter. As I said before, it's the 27th of October. Our daytime high today was, I think it struggled if it hit 25 degrees today. Um, and um, but you know, such is life, right? Um, this used to be, I think, this was that withered, um, that withered crop of. Um, Mr. Williams, I think. Anyway, we're going to plant our beans in here and, and give him a cut of the profit. But anyway, outside is all done. Um, but in, inside, like I said, with the bedroom that we're turning back into a bedroom, a spare bedroom, we are fixing my wife up with another office area. And so all that's getting done. And we really don't have anyone that comes and visits. Um, but we're sort of, you know, I'm sort of hoping that my dad will come out. Um, I may have to go down and get him, uh, one of those kind of things. But I would love for him to come out maybe this spring and spend a couple of weeks with us. And so we're just trying to, we, we, we had a spare bedroom, obviously, because my parents used to come out and visit. But uh, we just kind of completely rearranged everything. And we're kind of going through the... Um, the uh, steps to repaint everything as well you might remember I've talked about in the past and I know I've probably talked about it quite a bit but you know we had the water damage and everything that was done to the kitchen so we had some of that repaired some of that got repainted we also repainted the areas I think I showed the pictures of uh, myself doing the high ladder work and everything or at least I posted those on discord getting that done and um, and so now we're kind of moving through the process of getting the stuff done in the upstairs, the upstairs portion of the house, um, because well, we've got to you know we've got to get that done right. And so um, let's take it out of GPS. That makes it easier to turn, Jerry. And we'll come around here and put these. Uh, these headlands on later.
And so getting that kind of stuff done, getting getting the upstairs done, and I really think that, um, or at least we should, um, by, I would say probably by spring, by mi middle part of spring, because we're, we're going to, we're probably going to work another weekend or two. Um, and then once it comes time to actually leave, to go to Thanksgiving for, for, to spend some time with my dad and everything, we're going to, we'll stop the projects obviously. And I don't think that we will resume those projects until after the first of the year, just because it'll be Christmas mode. And once we get back home, um, it'll be time to put up Christmas trees and all that kind of stuff and, and just kind of enjoy the holidays, my wife and I. And so we won't be doing any projects and stuff. Then as soon as that's all done, it's, once it's time to pack the Christmas trees away and all of that stuff, then I think that we'll probably get back on some of that stuff. And I think that, like I said, by middle part of spring, unless unless I just get busy with work or something like that, um, we'll most likely have all of the house repainted. The interior of the house will all be repainted, I think, by then. My wife is, um, she mentioned the word master bathroom um, as far as updating that thing. And um, I don't believe that'll be a project that she'll ask me to tackle. I think I think it's just too, it's too it's too massive of a project um, to be quite honest uh, she knows this I know this pretty much everybody knows this that you know a bathroom project is just is just too big and at the rate that I work at the rate that I can you know do things demolition you know re reconstruction all that kind of stuff it would take way too many weeks and we would basically be without it so bring a contractor in, um, have them do everything, and then hopefully within I don't know, five to ten days or something, it would be it would be done. At least that's what I'm I'm hopeful for. Um, I don't mind, and neither does my wife, if it takes us a couple of weeks to paint a portion of our house. You know. I mean, it, it, for us to do a bedroom, it takes us like an entire, um, really and truthfully, it takes us an entire weekend um, just to paint a small bedroom because you've got you've got to paint the ceiling. That's like one day. That's got to dry. Um, you can usually we can put two coats of paint on in a day, but then you want to let you want to let the ceiling dry fully before you mess around with putting tape and everything on it to do your walls and um, and so it just you know we, we can only do so much and so we can we can do a weekend uh, bedroom and then the next weekend we can tackle something else you know but like the downstairs all the paint that we did there uh, several weekends ago that took us uh, that took us about three weeks uh, that took us about three weeks working um, working weekends and that was pretty much both Saturday and Sunday both um, getting getting that stuff done there's just you know it's one of those things where there's only so many there's only so many hours in the day and then there's only so much you know Jerry only has so much energy left at um, at the end of of the day so and we're off again but I will tell you this um, as I think a lot of you guys especially if you have been watching and listening to my shows for more than a year or two now you all know that we've done quite a bit here in this house we've done the the fireplace project, the entrance entryway project, the tiling those those tiling projects that I did about 18 months ago, and uh, and painting and, and doing things, and so as much as I enjoy doing a lot of the work myself, um, I just I know what my limits are, and I know that you know my limits my limits are getting 
my limits are limit are a lot more limited as I as I've gotten older. I, I could not have my basement has been finished now for um, almost ten years. There is no way that I could tackle this type of a project now, um, at least, and not you know not be able to work on it every single weekend like I did when uh, when I did it the first time. We worked. The framing went really quick, obviously, um, and then the electrical. I wired my office area for Cat Five. And um, obviously, I've got Wi-Fi and everything, but I run my gaming machines, and all desktop computers are wired in, and um, as they should be. And um, ran electrical, put plenty of plugs in the wall. Um, like I said, Cat Five, cable TV, jacks in a couple of different places in the in the office area in the man cave, and um, that went relatively quick. Then it came time to hang sheetrock, and that was kind of a slow process. That took us probably six weeks to do, um, and I don't know what the square footage is, but that was ceiling. That included ceiling, walls, baseboard trim, uh, kind of crown molding, and um, and then obviously tape, mud, texture, sand, and then we got rid of the paint and then painted and um, moved in, was able to go. And at that time, when I finished my, my basement office, the man cave, um, I, was able, I was able to work from home a lot more. I had, I had kind of a different, different job um, or different job responsibilities and I didn't, wasn't traveling as much, or when I was traveling, it wasn't it just wasn't as frequent. And so I was able, I was doing more project work and everything, and I was able to work from home uh, a couple of days a week. And then um, things changed, and different people took over the organizations at the you know, SVP, VP level, and some of these folks kind of didn't didn't agree in the whole working from home concept and and so a lot of folks had to had to come back in the office i was already in the office three days a week at least um some days four or some weeks four and um so my office the man cave really just kind of became really just kind of a glorified hobby room for me because um, I wasn't uh, I wasn't working at home anymore. All right, so let's um, let's hide these HUDs. Let's get a screenshot in here while we are down here on this end of the field. That looks all right right there. All right, well, we're coming up on about 24 minutes, and um, I have pretty much run out of things to talk about. Um, I just wanted to give everybody a little bit of an update on what I've been doing today while it's been snowing outside. I've been busy getting my gaming area set up again, so hopefully everything is uh, all good to go, and I will get used to the new seating configuration. It's comfortable, and that's the important thing obviously it's the whole ergonomics of of the space is is still just as comfortable as it was on the plastic tables um, I just don't uh, I'm just sitting a little bit lower because I actually had the plastic tables um, up on a um, up on a 4x4 on each end which gave me a little bit more leg room under underneath the table itself and I could sit in my chair a little bit higher but as this particular chair has that gas leak on it, um, it's probably going to be all right where it is because it's not. Uh, I'm not setting up as high. I just have to kind of get used to where the keyboard is and, and just kind of driving with one hand and have one hand on the keyboard. But like I said, the only things that I really have to use a keyboard for right now because I've got everything else pretty much mapped 
is um, it's starting up equipment. I've got to hit enter for that, obviously, and then exiting a vehicle. So I've got all the other, I've got lifting the implement. All that stuff is already tied to a to a controller binding and is good to go. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping things up and just let you all know that I will finish these two fields off camera. Uh, we will have that massive field right over there. Not that one, but that one way over there in the distance. That one will also be soybeans, and we'll get those put in the ground. Uh, we need to, um, we'll have Billy Bob and Jack. Uh, one of those two guys will do that, most likely Billy Bob. Uh, he is feeling much better since his procedure and everything, which I've updated you on already. And um, myself or, um, or Jack will start fertilizing, making sure that those fields, which are wheat and canola, have uh, are topped up with fertilizer. And then really just start, uh, Jack needs to start working on the combine, getting the combine into the shop, getting all of that um, greased up and ready to go because we don't, you know, we want to try to, we want to try to mitigate any sort of problems that we might have, obviously. And uh, if we can get service done on these types of vehicles and stuff before we need them in the field and that's always the best practice. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you are staying warm wherever you might be. I know it has been extremely hot in some places of the country. And then, like I said, in my uh, in my neck of the woods, it has actually been quite cool, quite unseasonably cold, as a matter of fact. Um, but uh, regardless of where you are, I hope you're staying warm, uh, staying dry, uh, staying fed and uh, having a good time and uh, please take care of yourself and also of each other god bless you all and please come back again for another episode here on lone oak farm and until then bye bye for now